Welcome to episode five in the International Free Expression Project's visionary series of online conversations uh, with people who defend free expression rights uh, around the world. I'm Greg Victor, a former journalist and founder of the project. Um, and today it is an honor and a pleasure to host Julie Trebeau, director of PEN America's Artists at Risk Connection, uh, which works to support and defend persecuted artists around the world. Uh, Julie will be talking uh, with the indomitable Vietnamese singer, songwriter, and free expression activist, Mai Khoi. Um, and before introducing Mai Khoi and Julie further, I'd like to say a few words about the International Free Expression Project. Um, we're dedicated to promoting everyone's right to express themselves and to be heard. And we do this by leveraging our own initiatives and those of allied organizations. And our four core projects are to uh, build a home for free expression in the former press room of a historic newspaper building in our hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the United States. And we're calling um, this place the marketplace of ideas. Our second core project is to erect what we believe to be the world's first signature work of public art symbolizing free expression near the marketplace of ideas at the confluence of three rivers, a beautiful scenic location. Our partner in this is Land Art Generator, uh, which has organized design competitions around the world for high-tech works of public art. We also, our third, the third leg of our project is to support the development of new immersive uh, educational tools. And our fourth is to support artists by commissioning and exhibiting their work. So now I'd like to introduce our guests. Julie Trebeau is a highly respected expert in the arts and archeology. span She served as director of public programs for the National Museum of Ethnology in the Netherlands, where she built an interconnected virtual exhibit spanning the collections of more than 100 museums. She also worked in this role for the Museum of the City of New York. In 2017, Julie joined PEN America to establish and direct its Artists at Risk Connection Project, which tracks the cases of at-risk artists and uh, provides support to them, uh, artists such as Mai Khoi. Mai Khoi um, was one of Vietnam's top pop star, often compared to Lady Gaga, until she was angered by the Vietnamese government censorship of artists. She then turned her celebrity to the cause of free expression. She confronted the government for its appalling record on human rights and thereafter was hounded, detained, evicted from her homes, banned from performing in public and otherwise persecuted by the police. She soon was compared to the dissident Russian activist band, Pussy Riot. Mike Coy now lives in exile in the US city of Pittsburgh where she can freely pursue her art and her activism. In recognition of her courage and achievements, she was awarded the Vaclav Havel International Prize for Creative Descent in 2018. And it was recently announced that she will be presented with the prestigious Four Freedoms Award for Freedom of Speech uh, in the Netherlands next month uh, at a ceremony attended by the Dutch King, Queen and Prime Minister. Um, a quick word about the format of this discussion. Julie and Mai Khoi will talk for about 30 minutes or so. Uh, then we'll pose some questions and take some uh, questions from uh, folks who are on our Zoom. So please ask questions in the chat room. And now um, I'll hand it off to uh, Julie Trebeau. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Greg and Daria, uh, for your kind invitation. Uh, to speak with, with Mai Khoi. It's really a, a great honor and a pleasure uh, to be uh, in this conversation with you, Khoi. Uh, thanks again uh, for, for joining us and talking about you know, your work, uh, your activism. So without further ado, I'll, I will dive in if you're ready, Khoi. Yes, I'm very Fantastic. happy to see you all today and thanks for having me. 
Great, thank you. Thank you for, for you know, for bearing with me and my questions. So let's start. Um, I think it would be a, a great kind of starter. Uh, if you can, can tell us, you know, like, can you dive like, broadly into discussion and hear from you about what does free expression mean to you and how do you feel free expression is understood or misunderstood in Vietnam? Um, to me, freedom of expression is the most important right for human uh, because without freedom of expression, people don't have the right to express their opinion. It means their society has no democracy. When people cannot express their opinion, how can they decide uh, for their society? So it's, 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 really, it's really important to protect freedom of expression. Thank you very much. And as I think, as you, you have mentioned in previous interview, um, you have been an artist, a musician since your very, like since your early age, like you were, I think nearly six years old. Um, so with that in mind, I wanted to ask you a little about the relationship between your advocacy work and artistry. And like, would you say that art has been always the driving force uh, behind your advocacy, your activism, or was it uh, the social consciousness that you formed from being a famous artist that inform how you create art and how you become an activist? Um, yeah, I, I was born and grew up in a very conservative society in Vietnam. And um, under the under the rule of the communist state, uh, we don't have any freedom. Um, even my my father, he is he is a music teacher. He's the first person who brought me to music. He taught me how to write songs, how to sing. Um, yeah, but I, I still feel like I am living in, in the very patriarchy society. And I, growing up, seeing many people around me, especially women, uh, have to face injustice in, in this, in, in, our own family and in the people, in the neighbor. And uh, I, I couldn't explain why, and I keep wondering why um, a woman around me always suffer from, from these things. Um, and then when I had a chance to get famous, I, I thought I shouldn't, I shouldn't be just famous for nothing. I should use the, my fame to do something useful for, for my society. Um, so I decided to become an activist to, to protect my own rights first and then to talk to express for other people who couldn't speak, like my mother, like my aunts, like my friends around me who, who couldn't really express their opinion and didn't have chance to develop themselves as they want. Can you, um, can you tell, you know, can you talk about um, specifically, you know, uh, what it means to you to be a bad activist? It's something, you know, like you have 
you mentioned before and how it has shaped kind of your views uh, on, on your music, on your art and on your advocacy? Uh, <laughs> Bad Activist is the name of my musical performance project. And many people ask me the same question, why you consider yourself as bad activist? <laughs> but actually, uh, my point is uh, even like you are bad activist or good activist, it doesn't matter. It is matter if you want to become an activist, because when you become an activist, you can have like you can have your passion to care about your society more you will act more more than just talk or um uh, reading the news and uh, didn't do anything um so i mean being a bad activist is, is not really bad activist. It's, it means something you have to you have to do because in this urgent time, um, we all seeing how bad the issues happening around the world and uh, Every single of us have to have to become activist. Thank you. And how you know how is music uh, a form of protest that allows you to challenge uh, the harsh realities uh, we face in our life, and especially uh, the Vietnamese uh, people facing their life. Um, Yes, I am lucky, lucky, I'm luckily <laughs> that I have music um, to express myself and to spread my message. So uh, when people, yeah, everyone love music and uh, when they love a song, they, the song moves them and they, we want to do something to help to contribute for the society. Um, so music helped me a lot to spread my message and uh, to connect people together. Like for example, like when I, when I organize a concert, I can gather like hundreds of people come to the event and they not just come to, to hear the music, they will, they will listen in to me to talk about what's happening right now. And, uh, and then the music will like will touch their heart. And that is how I, um, how I connect, how I can buy between music and activism. And how, you know, how now that you are living in the US and, and be part of kind of the American fabric of artists, like how important is the engagement of the Vietnamese public in your work, in your current work and how how have you felt your kind of current status of exile, of, being, of not being anymore uh, in your country has kind of affected the ways you engage with them? Yes, um, I, I actually, I didn't want to leave my own country. I was forced to leave my country. And uh, I think, it's more difficult for me to engage the people in Vietnam when I, I'm living in Excel now. Um, using social media is not enough to, um, to connect with people. It's just help a part of, of that, but it's, it's very difficult to engage people through social media. 
And social media also have two phases. Uh, one good phase that could help to, um, to organize things and to, um, to connect people. But another phase is, 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 is very easy to spread fake news and hatred and uh, misunderstand. Um, I, mm. I think living in Excel uh, is another challenge for me to, to keep working on activism. And uh, also the pandemic is, is, is a big challenge for everyone, but especially for Vietnamese activists like me. Um, we couldn't organize anything in the last two years because the pandemic. Um, so what I am doing now is I keep my small group to, uh, yeah, we, we just work with the small group, uh, a group of, of activist friends. We're still working together and uh, um, planning for the next few years. I think you are touching on a, on an important part with the social media and this kind of double sword edge of the social media. Um, like, how how do you think? Like, you know, have you seen in the digital sphere as as you are now in the US? You know, both in terms of censorship and possible uh, aid directed toward you. Uh, developing, you know, like over time as an activist and artist, have you, you know, like receive um, threats online? Is like, is it, you know, still continuing? Like, you have faced uh, harsh persecution um, by the Vietnamese government, and that's what uh, made you, you know, uh, seeking for uh, uh, refuge in the US. So, I, I love to know, you know a bit more about, you know, if you are facing still persecution and how likely you think you will be one day able to come back to your country? Um, yes, firstly, I want to say that um, the digital sphere is really helpful for, um, for people in Vietnam because compare with before, before we have nowhere to go to express ourselves because the government control everything. Uh, they all and control media and press, everything. Uh, and, and then now we have the internet, we have social media. So that is the only space we have to go to express freely and sometimes organize protests on social media as well. Um, and and it's, it's really important for us to have that space, but, um, but we losing that space now because the government is control, the government controlling everything. They tried, they not try, they actually <laughs> work with the company like Facebook and Google to censor the content on Facebook and censor some websites and, and they, um, they um, use social media, like they abuse, Facebook's uh, rules to, to silent dissent. Yeah, and uh, we, we, we are activists, we are very a few people, but the government have thousands of people working for them and they, and the, the company, like Facebook and Google, let them abuse their rules to silence dissent. So 
right now we not just have the fights in the real life we we have the real fights on internet to protect freedom of expression um you have spoken also in other interviews and written about those kind of both physical and virtual forms of exile. Like I want to go back a bit on the exile uh, um, uh, topic. Does these types of exile affect you differently the, the, between the physical and the virtual uh, uh, exile? And what does it feel like to confront not only this physical exile from one's country, but also an attempt at complete media exile as well. So it's like kind of jumping on what you say uh, right now. Yes, as an artist, I feel when I live in, in exile, it's like, it's like uh, I left something very important of my life behind i it's like my connection is the mental connection is cut i um when i was in my country i could attest all of the things that happening in my country and uh, i could attend the protests i could go with people to the street and I could organize things with my friends. Um, and all of that activities helped me to give power and stronger and help for my creativity as well. I feel like I have a lot of things to do and a lot of things to say when I was in Vietnam. Um, Compare with now, I, I am not lacking information. I still have a lot of information from, from my country, from my friends, but I, I feel like the, the innovation is, is not strong like I was in Vietnam. And, and the exile yeah. life also have different things that have, I have to worry about as well. Like I have to worry about where I should live next year, where I should live next year. What should I do to for work to to make my life um, stable here? Um, yeah, some worry like that. Also, the the um, the homesick. <laughs> it's it's hard. So so what what keeps you going? Like you know what keeps you going as an artist, an advocate when when you are confronted to you know those obstacles, you know to, to, to those many obstacles. Uh, what keeps me going? I think I I just do whatever I can do. Um, and I always try to do my best. Uh, I think I was born for fight, <laughs> so <laughs> I just keep fighting. Mm, yeah, and uh, I have a lot of support from people like you, like Craig, like Daria, like other international mm, organizations and uh, my my activist friends so all of these people keep supporting me so how can i give up i should just keep going and always hope for the better future for all of us thank you thank you for keeping the fight and 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 your kind words um I think I think you are definitely a prolific artist, Koi, and uh, have you know many testimonies of you know how you keep creating despite you know all those obstacles. And I think one of the recently um, your one of one of your recent project 
Um, it was like you submitted to the NPR Tiny Desk uh, competition with a song uh, we never know. So I hope that I can put it on the, on the chat. It's beautiful. As I understand it, the song was very important to you, including the story behind it with the passing of your friend, Diego Tula, and who helped you to continue performing even underground when you were banned of, you know, of being able to um, perform uh, um, uh, on, on stage in Vietnam. You, you face a, a, a harsh repression and, and, uh, and an introduction and a, the ban to, to your music and your performance. So can you tell us about that relationship and the importance of that underground period in your development as an artist and activist? Yes. Um, yeah, that, that happened um, two months ago. I, when I heard Diego, we, we, we know Diego um, long time ago because he came to Vietnam 20 years ago. He's Spanish and uh, he has um, a very big and beautiful house and garden. So he used that space to organize exhibition and concerts for local artists and for international artists as well um, as his business, Chula. Chula is a um, um, fashion design and he's a designer. And uh, I am one of his friends that I, I still remember um, one time when I was performing in Chula in, in his house. Um, <laughs> the police came and shut down the show. <laughs> they cut the electric, they cut the electric off. And we like, when I was singing and I, and I cannot sing anymore <laughs> because I, I was singing and the sound just off, just dropped. And uh, that was the first time the police raided my, like they not, they didn't raid it concert, but that is they, they, they want to shut off my show. And uh, people are very scared because people scared the police. But Diego, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't scared. He still let me perform after that. He still had the space for me to, I, I can't perform anytime I want in his house. Um, and I really appreciate that he, he always help Vietnamese artists um, all of his heart and his passionate. And uh, when he passed away, very suddenly, we really, really sad. And uh, I was so shocked and I was crying a lot. I and and because living in Excel, I couldn't go back to see him um, last time. So I wrote that song. So I think the art can connect us virtual. Um, the art can can connect us uh, spiritually and. And I sing that song, I make that song with my new bands here. Um, yeah, that is, um, that is a very special song that I just made recently. And thank you for mentioning that song now. We, we are submitting that song to Tiny Dance Contest. And uh, we're still waiting if Tiny Days choose our song or not. And I but, really hope, I really hope yeah. they will do. I really hope yes, they will do. Yes, I really, do. really hope that, that we, will, um, we will win the Tiny Dead contest. 
But firstly, I think the song will is kind of the connection between me and my artist friend here and Chula and, and Diego. Um, yes, spiritually. Yeah, it's a, it's a really beautiful, moving song. Um, I really uh, welcome all our, you know, listener today to, to connect to, to, to the song and, and hear it. It's, it's, it's really magnificent. Koi, uh, the song, and uh, I think it's a it's kind of a perfect segue. Also, when you were saying it's a moment for you to connect, of course, with memory of your friends, but also with your with your friend uh, here, uh, new friends here, but also your your friends, your old friends in Vietnam and the community in Vietnam. Um, I I think I, before opening a question to the audience, I, I would like to ask you a last question. I probably have a few more for you uh, later on, but um, what do you feel uh, are the most pressing issues uh, facing Vietnam today? And kind of what are your biggest kind of steps forward and hopefully reason or hope for your country? I think actually right now my country situation is very very bad it's getting worse and worse um, because they keep arresting activists every day every month i i have activist friends um arrested um, a lot um, from 2016 until now, 2000, 2016, 17, 18, and it was when the pandemic came, 2019 and 20, and they sentenced like longer years for 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 every every cases. I I don't have any hope for the future of Vietnam. Um, I think, um, and the pandemic didn't help. It's, it's made our movements very weak right now. We couldn't do anything to fight. We just, right now, we just keep the fire on the ground. We, we can't, we can't really do anything. Yeah. They they have to change the political system. That's and, and who can change? Just themselves. The communist states themselves have to change their own political system. That's the only way we can we can encourage them to do now. Thank you very much, Koi. Thank you. I think, um, well, you know, I always you on that and want, you know, to elevate what is happening in Vietnam and the condition of free expression and artistic freedom and also make really sure that um, can, you know, raise visibility about the issues uh, artists are facing and not only artists, but also journalists, activists are facing in Vietnam. So um, again, thank you so much for, for taking the time to speak uh, with me today. And um, as we always say, the fight continue and we'll be always for you, you know, always here for you at Pan America and ARC. Uh, and now, now, you know, turn to uh, our audience uh, if um, they have any questions for you. Um, yeah, thank you. Um... I guess I'm part of the audience, um, as well as the host. <laughs> um, uh, thank you both. Thank you, Mike Hoy, so much for telling your um, moving and important story, an inspirational story. Um, thank you, Julie, for um, talking to Mike Hoy. Um, and um, I'm sorry, Koi, that you lost your friend Trula. I would absolutely recommend that everybody check out the song you did in his honor. Um, yes, there is a my, link friend's to name, it. 
my friend's name is Diego, and his his design his oh. his business is Chula. So we Chula uh, is very so. famous design uh, fashion design. So we call him Diego Chula. <laughs> his name is Diego. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, that's great. The uh, for everyone to know the link um, to see her tiny desk submission song um, is uh, in the chat room. Um, I'd like to ask a, a quick question. Um, Koi, you were awarded the Vaclav Havel um, uh, International Prize for Creative Descent because your methods of descent have been very creative. I mean, you know, the shows that you put on um, and things like you were nominating yourself for the National Assembly in Vietnam, which, you know, is not something uh, most people would dare to do uh, <laughs> uh, with the communist government running Vietnam. But it's interesting, I just ask you to tell one uh, story, is that unfortunately the Vietnamese government has gotten fairly creative too. In, and um, it, to the point of creating a new Mai Khoi, hmm. would you just tell people about what, the, what happened with that? Um, I was, famous in Vietnam 20 years ago. Uh, and one of the reasons is I have the support from the government because the government own and controls media, television and press, everything. So if someone uh, wants to get famous, they have to go on television. Uh, and uh, I was famous because the help from the government to have me on their television shows. So um, the little Mike boy who just appeared in 2000, he, she appeared about 2018. At the same time, maybe at the same time or just right before I was banned from singing in public, um, when I was banned from appearing in public, I know that the people in the television and media and press, they, they have the decision from the government to not have me appear on their channel or on any article like don't never mention my name at all and uh, and and when the the little Michael came on television uh, she has support from from the government to make her famous and um, and people start to search my koi, it will appear the little my koi, not my, not my face, not, not this my koi. <laughs> so that is, that is the way the government, one, that is one of the many different ways that the government tried to re replace me by another my koi. Um, yeah, that's pretty diabolical, you know. Um, I'd never heard of a, of a government um, trying to do that, to create a new persona in the person's name. Um, if, uh, I don't know, if, uh, Claire, Nate, um, or Diane, if you have any questions, yeah. have at it. Yeah, Diane. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mike Hoyt. Really interesting what you're saying, and you're doing incredible work. And I'm wondering, you've mentioned, um, of course, the pandemic has been restrictive to what you'd like to undertake. Do you have any specific um, um, activism that you would like to jump on when things loosen up and you can actually move about freely? Um, so I um, like instead of organize more activism thing in the pandemic, we just organize some 
um, secret screenings and uh, the secret screenings is just gather small groups, like small, small, small ground of people. We don't have big crowd, but we have kind of like 15, 20 people gathering in every screening show, screening event. And, uh, and I also, I focus to do the performance back activist as well uh, during this time, because um, I think when we have, when I have the show ready to perform, um, it will have a lot of, like it will, it will have a lot of attention from people and uh, we will inspire more people when the show was tour around the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Um, thank you. Well, again, thanks, thanks for that um, question, Diane. And thank you everybody who is um, you know, tuning in uh, to this conversation, um, especially, of course, Mai Khoi and Truly. I should say one thing more about Mai Khoi is that she's a fabulous cook as well as a tremendous activist, actually a very <laughs> good activist. Um, makes the best pho I have ever had in Vietnam or elsewhere. Um, and um, I also, her bad activist uh, performance, she has been developing um, bad activists now as a theatrical production. And the premiere of uh, bad activists, the stage show will be um, in Pittsburgh in the fall, late September, October at the Pittsburgh Playhouse. Um, and I can tell you, um, it is so compelling, so moving. It's my Koi telling her story, interspersing her story with music, with images. Um, and um, anyone who goes will be um, moved and I think activated um, to, uh, you know, try to help her and uh, Pen America's Artist at Risk Connection and the International Free Expression Project do all we can to um, support artists, writers, bloggers, um, everyone's right to express themselves. Um, so wrapping up, I'd like to just thank everybody for coming. My Koi and Julie, I'd like to thank Pen America and the um, Artists at Risk uh, Connection for lending us Julie for a little while. Um, and the Colcom Foundation for its support of IFEP events and programs like this one. Um, and just, I'd like to thank our many supporters and collaborators um, in this mission um, that make our work possible. So thank you all again and uh, be well. <laughs>